Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure to be here. Actually, uh, the purpose why I'm in Singapore is that I'm participating in the Singapore General Hospital Nuclear Medicine Update, which is uh, taking place these days. And also, there is an uh, opening uh, of the cyclotron of the Singapore uh, PET and Cardiac Imaging Center, which takes place today. And I think it's a great event and will provide uh, nuclear medicine and PET with uh, new isotopes and better facilities. Um, I'm coming, as you heard, from Bad Berka. Bad in Germany means spa, so it's a beautiful place, as you can see here. Our hospital is actually located between uh, Frankfurt, about uh, two and a half hours by train from Frankfurt, and Berlin, so in the middle, in the former eastern part of Germany. Uh, it's an 800-bed hospital, and uh, we have there what we call a multidisciplinary neuroendocrine tumor center. Uh, this is one of the uh, most important features when you are treating neuroendocrine tumors, that you have to work very closely together, different specialists like internal medicine, gastroenterology, endocrinology, oncology, and also, of course, uh, surgery, which is the uh, first you know, uh, discipline which treats actually uh, usually with a patient, but also interventional radiology, which becomes more and more important, for example, for treatment of liver metastases uh, by embolization therapy or radiofrequency ablation and other methods, and also nuclear medicine, which is involved in the diagnosis uh, as well as in the treatment of tumors. Uh, so we have uh, there a panel of specialists in our center and we are discussing uh, each case before we start therapy together and try to find out what is the best therapy. This gives you a little view of our hospital. Uh, as I mentioned, it's an 800-bed hospital. Here is our PET and, set, uh, and uh, uh, PET CT nuclear medicine <coughs> department, which was, uh, by the way, also founded uh, 10 years ago, so we you know, had our anniversary um, Actually, in uh, 98, uh, in May this year, we, we had the 10-year anniversary. And our nuclear medicine ward, uh, which is the largest in Germany and has 22 beds, uh, is located here with a beautiful view over uh, the river valley, which is called the Ilm River. <clears throat> you know, in Germany, it's uh, obligatory is that any patient who receives uh, radioactive treatment is treated as an inpatient, which is uh, different from other countries where, for example, radioiodine uh, is given uh, on outpatients, but uh, we have to keep every patient uh, in our ward. Uh, it's a really beautiful new ward, and uh, I think many neuroendocrine uh, tumor patients appreciate that very well. I would like to you know, divide my lecture into two parts. The first part is more on the principles of this treatment to explain it and uh, on the diagnosis of uh, neuroendocrine tumors, which I think is uh, very, very important. As you heard already from Bill, and thank you very much for inviting me to this event. Um, it's uh, a very underdiagnosed disease. You know, uh, many patients present uh, just with metastases in the liver or in lymph nodes, and then there is some tissue taken out, and it's called an undifferentiated tumor and treated as such. And since we have uh, new methods of diagnosis like immunohistochemistry and so on, it's now diagnosed more and more. And the man who created all this uh, idea and the principle uh, is Paul Ehrlich. Uh, who was born uh, in Poland but uh, lived then as a German professor in Frankfurt, uh, Germany. And he created uh, the so-called side chain theory. And that was at his time as a pathologist in Strasbourg in France when he was working with tissue staining. You all know hematoxylin eosin staining. Everybody is using that HE staining till today. And that was created by Paul Ehrlich, you know, to characterize certain cells and to differentiate cells from each other by using colors. And by using these, it came to his mind that there might be at the cell what he called amboceptors, so specific, you know, structures which take up the colors. 
And from that he developed the theories that also bacteria, for example, work on the same way that they bind to cell and, you know, intoxicate cell and develop together with uh, bearing, uh, uh, you know, what we, what we call a, a vaccine against uh, polio and uh, diphtheria and tetanus. So I think um, it's a very important step forward. And he also had the first idea of uh, uh, what we call today tumor markers. These are substances given from the cell into the bloodstream, as you can see here, and that we can measure these specific uh, you know, uh, tumor markers in the bloodstream. So he, he created uh, what we, what the word Wunderkugeln in Germany, which is uh, magic bullets in, in English, and uh, said, you know, substances are working only if they bind specifically to the cell, corpora non agunt nisi fixata, this is Latin language, and means that, uh, you know, all these amboceptors and the antitoxins, how, how he called it, must be worked together. And this is exactly the principle what is used today uh, when we are speaking about a peptide and a ligand binding to a cell or an antibody, you know, uh, and uh, the antibody ligand. So he received the Nobel Prize in 1908, also about 100 years ago, and this was a groundbreaking idea and basic principle. Now, about 18 years later, uh, Shelley, uh, who also won a Nobel Prize for uh, detection of LHRH and uh, also of somatostatin, uh, was also, by the way, born in Poland, <laughs> um, uh, you know, developed uh, the idea that the somatostatin receptors uh, are localized uh, not only in the pituitary gland and the hypothalamus, but also he showed that they are present on certain tumors. And these tumors were then called neuroendocrine tumors. These are tumors which uh, build usually hormones which are given into the bloodstream. And the most important uh, hormone you all know is, for example, insulin. So a tumor arising from the pancreas uh, and localized in the pancreas, uh, you know, producing insulin is called an insulinoma. And there are also other tumors uh, building other hormones like serotonin, these are mostly localized in the midgut, in the small bowel, and others like glucagonomas, gastrinomas, building glucagon and gastrin, and many other peptides like uh, vasointestinal peptides, so-called vipomas. So it's a, it's a wide range of tumors, and all these tumors contain somatostatin receptors. And you can show that this tissue is containing these receptors by using radio-labeled peptides, which bind, please remember, Paul Ehrlich, you know, to this specific receptor. And by autoradiography, you can show that this tissue is containing these receptors. And shortly after that, uh, it was shown by the group from Krenning in uh, the Netherlands, in Rotterdam, that if you label these peptides with another radionuclide, which is called indium, indium-111, you can also image these tumors. So you can not only stain tissue, but you can image tumors, what we call scintigraphy. So indium octreotide or octroscan was the first imaging agent in nuclear medicine to image this tumor. And if you give very high amounts of radioactivity, then you can even shrink these tumors. And that was also shown at this time. So this is a modern side chains or modern magic ballots, and it's a schematic representation of a drug for imaging and targeted therapy. So your target can be different. It can be different receptors on the cell. Uh, all these are so-called G protein coupled receptors. Uh, or it can be antigens, like for antibodies. You all know, for example, uh, antibody which is uh, used for treatment of breast cancer uh, and targets a HER2 uh, antigen. Uh, or it can be um, somatostatin receptors or other receptors. 